Holy fucking shit. Look at this. We are no longer recording with Potato. <laughs> I am CJ, and this is, well, Mafia 2. And I'm sitting with my wife early in the morning, so she may or may not be participating in this Let's Play. As you can see, we're obviously still playing around with our settings for our various recorders. This is the third different recorder we've used for the podcast. Uh, obviously, it looks a lot better. Uh, I mean, for, we've had the recorder for the old school games on the Super Nintendo and the Genesis that works fine. It was a little bit choppy, but, you know, it looked pretty, but the performance wasn't there. And then the last one that we did, the performance was there, but it looked like absolute shit. And we seem to have finally found some sort of common ground here. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was before. So, where we left off was me trying to buy some clothing that didn't look like shit. This all still looks like shit. I... Is there something else? I casually remember there being more options for, like, t-shirts and stuff. Maybe I'm confusing it with Godfather 2. See you next time. Which is a really good game. What are you, some Ugh, kind of fine. The problem is, these all look just as good as what I'm wearing right now. So it's just like, why am I going to buy any of these? So you have things to change into when you want to buy the pops. Don't fucking sass me. <laughs> wow, right. it fits you perfect. Let's go with the suit. That looks horrible. Fuck! And I, there's no preview, so it's just I purchased it. Alright, so <laughs> now I look like a tool. Ugh, alright. Hold the pickle. Oh yeah, that's... Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck! Fuck! <laughs> no! That was super bad timing. Run! Run, you tool! Oh, God. So, I looked up a little bit about this game. Um, the studio that made it, it's... It was published by 2K and it was developed by 2K Check. Uh, the 2K Check Studio... No, go! Fuck! Fuck! It takes forever to actually drive! No! No! Look at this slow motion turn. Super dramatic. You don't have enough money for a bug. Run for it. I'm trying to run for it. Let me run for it. It's not letting me run for it. Yay! Fuck! 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 Alright, come on! Hopefully this one starts a little quicker. Drive, drive. Fucking drive. You're not driving, there we go. I like the little detail there, it's because it's so slow to start, I kind of start going downhill at first. Like, I don't automatically floor forward, the car is sort of like, drifting backwards before it begins again. Anyway, um, the studio that made this game checked too. I looked into their past a, li uh, a little bit, and they don't have a very extensive list of great games. Um, what is this one? They've made a game called Viet Cong. It's part of a really bad series. They've also made a game called Hidden and Dangerous for the PC. Bribe the police, 500 bucks. No fucking thank you. Um, I can't seem to exit out of this. There we go. Um, can I please leave the booth? Thank you. Yeah, they weren't a very good studio. They made a lot of shitty games. There's tons of other ones that I just didn't bother to recall. And somehow in the midst of all that was this game. I don't know how it was possible. They must have gotten help from, like, somebody else. Help from somebody else? I just realized I said health from somebody else. I, I've said it before, this isn't Grand Theft Auto V, it's not a revolutionary game. I recall it like getting decent ratings, but it didn't set the world on fire. But amongst the games that they did de develop before and they continue to develop today, this is just a miracle. I don't know how they managed to actually get this out the door in the condition that it's in. Uh, from what I could see from various developer commentaries and things like that, a lot was left on the cutting room floor. 
uh, hackers and various people that are you know a lot better with computers than I am were able to sort of look into the game's code and see just how much was sort of left behind that just never got finished. Uh, supposedly there was an early build for like subway systems and things like that. A lot of it was just tiny little bits and pieces that wouldn't really actually affect the end game. But the biggest thing that they seemed to leave behind was a multiplayer build. And that's not uncommon, because I mean, when publishers sort of sit down and evaluate pitches for games, uh, multiplayer and things like that are often one of the things like, will we have multiplayer, will we have downloadable content, things like that. That's very commonplace. And more often than not, it's not included because it would be shitty. They couldn't change the code enough to actually implement it properly, things like that. However, it's intriguing because the game controls really well. It makes me wonder what they would have done with multiplayer if it would have been just a basic, basic uh, deathmatch sort of shooter, or if it would have been more akin to Godfather 2 for the 360 and the PS3. For those of you who don't know, Godfather 2 was a game that was virtually like this. I mean, there's only so much you can differ. It was an open-world action sort of shooter game. But what differentiated it from everything else and made it a really good game as well was the fact that it was sort of an RPG light or had RPG elements. It utilized this sort of um, an overworld system where the higher rank, like you could level up, get stronger, get uh, additional upgrades, control territories, things like that. And as you went along, uh, say for instance you wanted to control a certain neighborhood, then all of your guys from that point on will have body armor. Control another neighborhood, then um, you will have an arsonist specialist, uh, things like that. And then in the multiplayer world, everyone would have their various roles on the team, like there'd be the medic, there'd be the enforcer, they'd have different weapons, different skill sets. And this game has a much better story, and the actual shooting and combat and actual interactions with the world is a lot better. However, that element of Godfather 2 made it a lot of fun, and to think that putting those resources together and combining it into one game would have been amazing. I'm going to shut up and just sort of let this story play out a little bit. And by story, I mean absolutely no story whatsoever. Oh, out of the dark, windy. So this is Papa uh, yeah, I'm looking for a Mr. Fatty Colorado. Mix something. Yeah. Lardo. Why? My name is Vito Scaletta. My old man used to work for him, and I'm looking for a job, so I came here. Look at how scummy he looks. Well, you're in the right spot, sonny boy. Federico Papalardo. at your service. Derek. You call me Derek. <laughs> Where the fuck did Derek I, think I come remember from? your dad. Good guy, but drank like a fish. Uh, yeah, What's but where did Derek come from? He's dead. Oh. Oh, How many nicknames uh, does this asshole need? You all gotta go Is sometime. Right, oh, Steve. Whatever. <laughs> sure, Derek. It's Papa Lardo to me. So you need a job, man. Huh? Well, you're in luck. We just got a new shipment on. I can go for a stick. Steve, we'll hungry. show you around. Now, so while they're doing absolutely nothing here and just doing the introductions, uh, it's worth mentioning that this was originally a PS2 game when it was in development. Follow me. As I mentioned, this is obviously the fucking sequel to Mafia 1 which was a PS2 and a PC game, and when that came out, they had started production on the sequel, and it just sort of lounged around for a long time and really couldn't get out the door, and then eventually they decided to sort of kick it up and say it would be a 360 game. I can't remember if it was on the PS3 or not. I believe so. Uh, and it was in development for five years by the time it came out. I believe it came out in 2000. And some at some point, September, November, something like that, later half of Q3. Now it don't take all day. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Load the crates onto the truck. Exciting! I like how I'm doing this in a fucking suit. Alright. This is super exciting gameplay. I'm having flashbacks of Shenmue here. For those of you who don't know, Shenmue was a open world job simulator, I'd say, for the Dreamcast and the Xbox. The Dreamcast was the original Shenmue, Shenmue 2 was on the three, or, uh, Xbox. Oh, Basically, yeah, you were, uh, I believe it was in like China or Japan, something like that, any country, 
and you were a guy trying to avenge the death of his father to find out what happened, and you had to do various little tasks from... You know, of course there was, like, fighting elements to it, like hand-to-hand combat and stuff, but a lot of it was more problem-solving, point-and-click style adventure. So it'd be like, oh, well, I need money, I'll go work at the docks. And it was like, Jeez, well, it was famous for having you to actually participate in the jobs. And the minigames weren't fun, they weren't supposed to be. The de- developer even said, I want you to feel tired and exhausted from this. So you'd have to play in real-world time one hour of working at the docks, where you had to like drive around a forklift and move boxes and stuff. For no fucking reason, aside from like, oh, this is your guy's job and he's gotta like make money. And you had to do that for three days in a row, something like that. So it was three hours of real world time of just doing monotonous work, kind of like moving these crates. Then there's little things like betting, like chicken races, or you can go to like the arcade and do the slot machines. And it was very long and, uh, to be honest, agonizing. It was fun to be had because it was sort of interesting, like, what are they going to get me to do next? But the game wasn't fun. Uh, I get the impression you're supposed to give up on this, given it keeps telling you the door is open to leave when you've had enough. Uh, I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> it's up in the top corner. It keeps popping up. Am I making money from this? If you load all of them and nothing gets broken, you'll get ten bucks. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll just leave. This isn't fucking Shenmue. I'm not going to be doing this for an hour. Alright, bye guys. Thank you for letting me do a couple hey, boxes. You done? Yeah, I'm done. And you can keep the ten bucks. When I said I needed a job, I didn't mean slave labor. Whatever. I've turned off achievements, so I didn't want that popping up and interfering with everything. But I wonder if I would have gotten an achievement if I didn't all the fucking times crates. More working for Barbaro Incorporated. Wait, you said Barbaro? Joe Barbaro? Joe Barbaro? Yeah, so what? Shit. His name's just so boring. Works with Derek, Joe Steve, and Joe. For ten bucks. What the hell are you doing? Oh, Joe's a friend, right? But I forgot. I guess so, yeah. I've now already sort of said that, like, the friend's name is fucking Roman. Alright, Steve, let's go. He looks like a Steve. Like the male pattern bo- Steve? Uh, Alright. <laughs> the male pattern baldness, the paunch, the sort of bad attitude. That's Steve in my mind. <laughs> I think we just had some people unsubscribe. Can't have this Steve. <laughs> I don't think we have enough people what subscribing now? to be well, fucking named Steve. Don't like manual labor. <laughs> Little do I know, like, all of our subscribers are named Steve. Welcome to the Steve and Steve well, podcast. We're playing joke. Steve 2, and... To to uh, I don't know why I'm going with boy. this joke. What's your story? Uh, well, my mother wanted me to come talk to you about an honest job, but... I need some real money, so this ain't gonna cut it. I'd love to make fucking <laughs> ten bucks an hour for fucking women. loading crates. They're all the same. Right, Steve? Sure, Derek. She doesn't want you oh yeah, one thing, the uh, right Playboys, <laughs> they sort of factor into this, this, well, not the story, way. but the game. They are sort of essentially the Grand Theft Auto hidden the packages fuck, or pigeon collectibles. You can find them, like, hidden so throughout the game. Uh, from what I heard, that the timeline of this is sort of a little bit fucked up. Uh, the time that the game takes place, you know, just after World War II, a couple years later. Playboy hadn't actually come out Listen, at that point. Uh, I believe the Playboy was like early sixties, something like that. So while Playboys so can be like found throughout so the game, it wasn't call, something that right? existed in the timeline. And this is actually a leftover from when put early in the game's development, the game was supposed to take place in the sixties, which would have completely, you know, obviously this is much different because the cars are different, the music's different, the clothing's different. They just completely revamped that and for some reason decided not to take out the Playboys. I don't know if it was just sort of a factual error that nobody thought of to check, or if it's just something that said, hey, fuck it, it's kind of a fun collectible. But, yeah, a little interesting tidbit, the more you know. Don't fucking stare at me, Steve, I'm not here for your bullshit. This is Derek. Listen, I got this guy here. Goddamn Steve's. your name was? Vito. When we return, hopefully I'll be doing more than just loading crates, because, god damn, this is not Shenmue 2, we're going to do something more interesting than that. I want to push old ladies down the stairs and play with cops and bollocks. 
This has been CJ and a little bit of AJ. Thank you for watching. When we return, I also probably will not have a different video game capture card. No promises though, because hey, uh, I like to play with things. <laughs> I do like to play with things. Thank you for watching. Fuck this cutscene.